Hello Cancer and welcome to your February 2021 video. I'm Zara and I'm going to take you through the astrology for February. So Mercury will be in retrograde and Mercury is in your 8th house along with the Sun, Jupiter and Saturn. And then the 2nd we have Venus also moving into your 8th house and on the 11th of February a new moon also happening in your 8th house. Now there's a lot of energy in your 8th house and also with Mercury retrograde happening in your 8th house. This is all about your fears and past traumas and deep intimacy, emotional feelings that can be holding you back. And you're going to have this opportunity to see what is hidden. Because the 8th house is everything that's hidden. It has to do with secrets. It has to do with everything coming to light. And that cannot be easy because it is a house of emotion. It is the house where we go into our deepest, darkest feelings. Having to come to see things with our relationships with others, our partnerships, the people we partner up with. And this can be because the 8th house also deals with finances. It can be romantic. It can be relationships but anywhere where you feel things are hidden things are unsaid secrets it's all those energies that are now coming through for you to get some clarity on and it won't be easy because mercury isn't retrograde so things of the past come up and that's why it's a good opportunity to release past traumas to see in the past how you've acted where you've basically didn't have a healthy boundary where you allowed someone in where, where you made choices in your emotional self that have basically now created situations that you have to kind of heal and understand and the eighth house is that house of understanding it's a great house for research and information especially when it comes to your finances if you're thinking about moving or making any major changes to your career i would suggest to wait until the 21st of February because during Mercury retrograde we can have miscommunication, misunderstanding and not just only verbally but also written information, documentation, technology also can be a bit off during Mercury retrograde as the planet rules all those spheres. So just wait until the 21st of February and during that time use it as a time to basically go into your intuition. You are a very intuitive sign. So here your intuition would be awakened even deeper in your feelings and gut feelings about things and gut feelings about yourself. Because we do have that too about ourselves. Like, oh, I said yes to that in the past. But, you know, maybe at that time when I said yes, I was just doing it to people please or to, you know, feel emotionally stable. It wasn't really... What was best for me we do things that we sometimes think that are going to keep us stable emotionally <laughs> where we will agree to a relationship or agree to you know maybe lending money or something like that where we do these things and then later we're like oh i thought that was going to offer me some sort of stability emotionally maybe a deeper bond or deep understanding because i was so you know caring or sympathetic to your plight but now you actually see that this maybe wasn't the right choice and that's okay. And that's why it's a time for healing and for you to really look through these things of what you've, you, what you've previously agreed to because the eighth house is about contracts too, because it's about partnerships and actually dealing with others and having to see where we can readjust and allow for new beginnings to enter. Also a very important thing because so much of energy is in your eighth house. It's important to look, at the opposite side, which is the second house, also to do with finances, resources, and value, and support. So one time when we have all this energy hitting at one point, all everything in the eighth house, all these planetary bodies, the other house gets neglected. And that's the house we actually need to look at, which is your second house of money, value, resources, and support. And looking at your relationships and seeing, do you value this? Do you value this person? Do you value the situation? Or if it's a career choice, what values do you have around it? If you want to start something new or a business or you want to move or want to get a promotion, is there value? 
Will it make you feel better? That's what it is in the second house. The second house is ruled by Venus. So it's a lot about what makes us feel good. It's our sense of self-worth, looking at your worth, what value you have towards yourself. What value do you have to the people around you? What value do you have to your money? How are you spending your money? What are you doing with your money? All of those things. But it takes us to an emotional level where we look at our worth, our value, and really wonder, like, you know, sometimes we even make choices when we aren't feeling confident, maybe even insecure. Maybe we don't want to be alone. Maybe we feel, oh, if I want to start this project, it's best for me to partner up with this person. You know, like this career project or any project for that matter. And now you're like, I should have just done it with myself. That's the energy that's coming through because you're here to look at what, val what value do you put to yourself, to others? And do they value you? Are you getting support? All of those things. Look at it. And then the 19th, the sun will join Neptune in your ninth house. The sun joining Neptune in your ninth house is basically a sense of freedom wanting a sense of freedom wanting to explore not only just explore your environment and things around you but also explore when it comes to information spiritual understand ninth house is about a spiritual journey and joining neptune gives you this boost of imagination where we can imagine different things for ourselves and maybe want to take a journey down a different road you know and explore something new then on the 27th we have a full moon and that will be happening in your third house so a full moon in the third house. On um, third house, rules communication, <laughs> networking, sharing of information, communication, how we communicate with others. Third house can also bring a bit of that gossip kind of energy, wanting to pull away from those kinds of situations. Maybe even during the Mercury retrograde you prior, you might have found out certain things that people had said about you. And now you actually with the third house, it's about our connection to people in our close environment where we feel we want to like, oh, I don't like what was said there. Maybe we should discuss it. And isn't true. Or either you just want to, you know, I don't think this is the environment I want to be in because the third house is our close environment. And also about a little bit of movement and traveling a little, but not like far, just in your environment where we're like, okay, maybe today I want to go to the beach. Maybe today I want to go for a walk, a clarity of mind is what we seek in the third house and sometimes when we get out we can look at our mind and like see oh, okay this is what i've been feeling now what are my thoughts on it and taking action there full moons are great times for releasing letting go allowing that new energy so allow for that shift to happen when it comes to you mentally how you speak to yourself even a shift with your own values within you you might value yourself now in a different light. And so your internal dialogue with yourself and how you communicate with yourself will also want to change. Allow for that change to happen. Thank you so much for watching and do like and subscribe.